Hello and welcome back to another episode of Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our journey into the blasphemous world of Rogue Trader. Blind playthrough, um, hardest difficulty, even harder than hardest difficulty. And you know the drill, we are trying to find a couple of um, uh, quests before we're going to the siege. Uh, where we need to hold war council and I think I found the first one because uh, this year definitely hasn't been here before so I might be completely going out of line in saying that it is part of the quest but I'm scouring through all of the different systems at the moment trying to find um, events uh, for Marzai's quest. An officer of the Augur team reports this world is covered in a thick forest and steam mountain range. There's no particular interest except for one fact. A fierce battle has unfolded between a group of Xenos. <clears throat> a multitude of small ships are concentrated around the area. Uh, some of them heavily damaged and outright destroyed. Around the cluster of the ships, scanners detect a plethora of Xenoforms employing unidentified weapons and technologies. Marzai... Yeah, okay... I, Mars, I suppose uh, that this location is uh, one of the surviving warriors uh, of this um, rampist uh, that they could engage a pursuer from the cabals uh, that crave for death. The Xenos uh, is determined land, uh, to land on the planet and meet with the Drukari from the cabal and unceremoniously barge into battle, whoever the enemy may be. Um, <clears throat> that Marazai take part in the melee alongside an assault squad. And we got a lot of trophies out of it. A uh, nice little Xeno fusion gun. What is that? Alderi deals 60% damage to burning enemies. Oh, uh huh. Mm hmm. Well, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. And a couple of Xeno artifacts. Well, that was it. I thought we could land there. Hmm. All right. Let me search on. Uh, that certainly has been one of the things that we need to do for Shards of Tempest. But there might be more. Uh, so I'll scout out all of the other systems. Okay, small little update. Whilst we were warp traveling, something is developing. I was pulled onto the void ship. Oh, it's a Cassia Intercept. Saiken, how wonderful I found you here. Please forgive me, my powers are sometimes too insistent in their attempts to break free from my uh, control. I came to de deliver good tidings. I've spoken with the house's navigators through the Atlas. Of late, I can feel with increasing clarity how our connection is growing stronger. Despite the descents of the mids, House Celio uh, has been able to keep a uh, precarious equilibrium, thanks uh, in part to your unexpected arrival on Euroc 5 and the resolution of the conflict of the Dragonos reception. Not all Orcellus concur with your decision, but no one can deny the impact uh, that you and no one else have had on the house present state of affairs. There is more than I wish to tell you. It's about the visions that I have to come and experience in an increasing rate during the warp jumps. The same visions come to me again and again and again it is as if I would be going mad for you see these visions are about me the Atlas the Tisiphone or Celio uh, the house's previous navigator I've seen Tisiphone's experiments uh, the ones that involve the navigator from the Thethlera branch which she was rumored to have destroyed for disobedience. But the visions told me an altogether different story, one of which the Seth Lears helped Tisiphoria to create the Atlas, and they vanished immediately after the experiments were done. Perhaps I can know I know I can find the way to the Palace of Atlas if I can recreate Tiffernon's journey from the visions. A real palace, not a psychological illusion of an Osolia navigator can reach out. I have always had the feeling that it truly exists in our world. Now, however, I know it with absolute certainty. Um, I've been informed that House Forcelio will soon uh, convene its Grand Council. Wouldn't it be better 
to wait for it to finish first. I cannot shake the certain foreboding about the upcoming meeting uh, in the incorporeal palace of the Atlas. Troubling marriages have plagued my mind for many nights. Now voices calling and cursing my name. And the more I use the Atlas, the clearer the visions become and the louder the voices grow and the further my powers wane. I am certain that all of the houses expecting the same for all of us are connected experiencing the same for all of us are connected i can sense my family's fear how so Celio is doomed to perish into darkness should i fail to discover the reason why the atlas is weakening and that reason i believe is hiding somewhere in my visions of tissiphone what makes you uh, so sure that the Atlas is a physical manifestation? What else did your visions tell you? I saw Tissiphone experience an epiphany in a dream. Just like the visions came to me in our travels of the warp, she beheld a planet hidden behind a roiling warp stone. Uh, the world promised her great power, so Tiphone gathered the Thethelias, her most devout followers, then go on a suicidal journey through the tempest. I know not the details of what happened on the planet, but it was there that Thethelia sacrificed themselves for an experiment of some kind, and it was there that House Orselia obtained its Starway Atlas. For the first time I have the opportunity to find answers to the questions my mentors so deftly avoided. Why did Tisophone choose me? What is the Atlas? Is the is it true that House Oselius past is dredged in blood? Please, Saiken, do not snap this tauntly drawn uh, string of destiny, my destiny, journey with me. I shall help you. The house is still watching me, both renegades and loyalists. I doubt that any of them will agree, even to a brief amist amistice in the sake of learning the truth about the Atlas or an origin. And I do not wish to see House Oselia lose even one more life another practical skirmish. No, I shall go after the answers about our own past journey. All right, then we best go alone. Thank you for your understanding. And now permit me to take a leave. I must start preparing for the journey from what uh, I have been able to glean. We first travel to the Orselio protectory system. Ought that could be that the historical records are lying and Kalael Osorio um, is not whom the star system is named after. Either way, uh, that was the system which Trisophon embarked on her journey and we're going to follow her long uh, footsteps. Okay, uh, that is indeed quite interesting. Finally, a side quest of uh, one of the companions of the Prime team, which would allow us to use that from time to time and not only the secondary team. Not that I have anything uh, against our secondary team, but I urge to use uh, the Storm Bolters once again. Good, we got another event and it might be one that is relevant. Oh, there are Drukhari void ships. Have we identified this already? I think we have been on that void station, right? I think we've been on that already. Good. Drukhari void ships. On the edge of the system, a few crippled Xeno ships barely visible in the darkness of the space. Not displaying any usual hostility, the Xeno struck in inactivity and entirely ignoring uh, the presence. The Augur team has detected a number of damaged void ships, each afflicted with several system failures. An attempt to identify their drive signature is met with failure, but the scanners pick up exchange data between the ships. Contact the uh, ships. All right, let Marazai fly uh, to them. Shuttle carrying Marazayan returns so quickly to the rogue trader's vessel that it is impossible to tell whether the Xenos took part in a failed negotiation or participated in a violent, impetuous duel. Offering no comment, 
Uh, Marzai turns to the Lord Captain with a categorical request. Help the survivors and let them go. All right. Agree to help them. Officers sent um, to oversee the trade um, alongside Marazai report that the exchange was successful. Some uncooperative Xenos were against it, but Marazai's deadly hand took their lives before the argument gained any weight. What? Completed it? There was another um, another object here. Having already studied the surface of this planet before, the augurs detect the suspicious zone with an unidentified object in the center. It must have been hidden uh, before, but now it is active for some reason. Having studied... Okay. Okay. Well, that was that. Oh, damn. Mm. The message came up 15 times, then I click in, we're just clicking through it. That was not very good. Good. Let me double check if I missed anything on that uh, void station, but I'll do that off screen unless there is something good to be found. Alright, so... Uh, as expected, there was nothing on this map, um, which means it brings us to Marazai and uh, hopefully finishing his quest line. Rogue trader. All right. Um, I received a report that you were attacked by some creatures from the shadows. I have some recollection. What is it to you? Just secure to me. Ask your questions. It was a punishment. One of my raids was not as successful as it should have been. And Irimaris ordered Tavantius to forcibly implant the knowledge of the repulsive monkey language into my mind. Supposedly so that I could at least benefit the Cabal by coaxing the monkey into their cages. Five days I spent under a cerebral burner in the Spire's main hall. To the delight of Ivrimaris's entourage, I dislocated every joint, struggling in agony against my shackles. But I would endure it all again to expel this poison from my head. Well, he is Are a friendly... Sure? Uh, he is a friendly person. Then go. As always. And it's a bit saddening to see that we completed his kind of uh, side quest and there was nothing. That would be just generally the feedback to the side quest. I like the story and narrative and you get a little bit of experience, which pff, not uh, that important, but it would be nice uh, if there would have been rewards, even if it is consumables of sorts. But unfortunately, oftentimes, uh, you're just not getting any reward. All right, I'll check if I've missed anything on the star map. And elsewise, we're off to our next main target, which is uh, to hold War Council. Okay, so in my journey, I've gone through most of the systems. The only one that uh, still has something left open is the Litoribum Maledicta with one unforeseen event, which we need to do. But I also found Smagoros Mundos, which I think is uh, Cassia's system. Uh, let's spend uh, some time going there before we hold War Council. All right. Witness Hideo 00110 something, something. Uh, you claim that you left the Sanctum Navis on the navigator's orders. Affirmative. This unit accepted in accordance with the maintenance protocol of TRN 08353. Step 1 sends the sacred mechanism for the duration of 15 chronometer turns. All right, and Enforcer, you fail to inform the bridge about the imminent jump. I don't want to know why. Data unavailable. 
the lady navigator ordered uh, she has to be connected to the void ship but she did not uh, order the preparation of the machine spirit for the warp translation the unit received a command um, interrupt protocol and exited the sanctum navis servant no please not the fingers enforcer i'm going to break one for every word of lie that i hear from your mouth now talk Please, you have to believe me. All we did was prepare the canvas for the mix of the Lady Navigator's blood into the panes. And we were told uh, to lock open the shutters so that the Lord Captain could see everything that was going on inside of the Sanctum Navis from the observation cha chamber and... Grok shit. Armor glass can shield you from the war horrors. I, I swear it on uh, my soul on the golden throne. Uh, throne, master and forth, the, the lady navigator only wanted to paint a picture uh, for a ritual of some such. That is all I know. She wasn't going to use the power in her eye, but uh, still far away from uh, from there as far as I could. That's all I saw. I'm telling you, senior enforcer. We performed an emergency warp jump barely activated the geller field in time and now you're being direct uh, direct to the throne knows where by an unknown force the lady navigator and her lord captain are still unaccounted for now tell me one more time what transpired in the sanctum i escorted the lord captain to the observatorium's chamber and yelled at the servant for leaving the shutters open then i was told that it was on the rogue trader's orders we could see the Levi Navi lady navigator clearly through the armor glass. She was lost in thought, straight at the canvas in front of her. She looked like she was completely unaware of the world around her. Uh, soon the servants were ordered to leave the sanctum navis, and the lady navigator picked up her brush. Entranced, she started dragging across the canvas, painting one image over another, then another one over the last, and another, and and the Lord kept notice it. There was a thing on the other. That's a cool picture, by the way. Uh, on the other. Uh, dash to the control panels. I didn't dare to stop him. I just watched Bolter at the ready. The machine spirit went mad and the doors of the shutters started to open and close at random but the rogue trader managed to dart inside um, startled by all of the noise the lady navigator turned around and then those horrors in her painting broke free and what happened next i barely remember a thing there was a bright flash a purple blur i remember i was so scared that my knees were shaking i remember my legs carrying me away uh, like they had a mind of their own. As I ran, I heard screams behind me. The Lord Captain and Lady Cassia, they all, the God, God Emperor, the creatures, they pulled them both inside of the painting. Sir, Mistress Voxmast, I have a report that needs to be delivered to the senior officer. The Lord Captain and the Lady Navigator were lost during the emergency warp jump. Their whereabouts are still unknown. I'm sending you the interrogation reports. Um... Othelio's ritual did not go as planned. The warp disturbance triggered by the navigator's trance washed over the Sanctum Navis. The void ship machine spirit uh, reacted to the search of the Immaterium and interpreted as a call to action. Thus did the emergency uh, jump into an unknown begin. Amidst the shrieks of the siren, the cling uh, clanging of shutters and the distant hum of the warp engine, some unknown will be pulled uh, the Lord Captain into the Sanctum Navis towards the creature from the living canvas that has already gripped the Lady Navigator's throat. Horrified, almost out of breath, they struggle to scream. Cassia stretch out her hand and begin to slowly sink into her own painting. The Lord Captain. Snatched a dagger and went at it. The ritual dagger of the House of Celio cleaved the billowing shadow, and yet the painting had reformed itself moments after the blade passed through it. Cassia went limp, and the clutches of her horrifying creation was immediately pulled to, to the other side of the painting. A moment later, Saiken, still in the clutches with the dagger, was likewise plunged into the depths of the world of the, that the Lady Navigator had created. Saiken woke, finding himself in the middle of a gigantic, boundless, billowing nothingness. His body feel, feels weightless, float, uh, floating in the void stream with hundreds of Lady Navigator's colors, some of them bright, warm, alluring, others 
Moreau is cold heavy. The Lord Captain. Uh, closed his eyes and remained adrift. Saiken stayed in the ocean of nothingness, devout of any sensation or emotion, until a slight smile upon someone's lip surfaced in his mind. The warmth on his skin, the silk of her snow-white hair, Cassia. She was there, somewhat amidst uh, the thieving nothingness, all alone. Someone's scream broke the delicate equilibrium of the Lord Captain's motionless body and their weightlessness released him. He plummeted into the maroon abyss of a roiling illusion, but was now full of, his, um, of control of his body again. Um, he reached for the bright colors. Saiken plunged into a river of bright hues, and flashes of rosy sunlight and lilac carried him down a dazzling stream. Before long, the Lord Captain was standing in an idyllic garden, uh, permeated with a f uh, fragrance and flowers, and singing of birds. Servants in purple uh, livery darted back and forth, attending to a withered old woman in navigator's mask, sitting around her lap, and her smiley um, coyly to everyone was a little girl with ruby eyes and white hair. Be a good girl, my child, until the day we meet again. With trembling hands, the woman hand, uh, handed the girl to the navigator in the laboratory attire. I am out of time. Prepare the child for the Atlas transfer and destroy all records and mentions of the world of ear TV. No one must learn of that which has taken place here and remember. Her body must grow strong for it to accept my power. And once I have returned... Your loyalty will be rewarded. The memory was gone and Saiken once again found himself plummeted into the maroon of um, visions. And when swarming to the darkish colors, he saw grayish blue waves that swallowed the Lord Captain and the feeling of lightness disappeared and his limbs grew heavy. Saiken fell on a hard floor of a laboratory cluttered with vats um, as tall as a human. Inside them were a dozen, hundred, even repulsive mutants. Some had no arms, no legs, and two heads, other no face, or with their innards uh, turned inside out. But uh, each had a white skin, white hair, long claw limbs, and ruby eyes. My lady, the child, the child is born. The tall woman slowly approaches the one of the vats, Readings? Stable. Mutations? None were detected in any of the stages. Genes? Identical, my lady. Hmm. Chances of survival? A hundred times higher than any of the previous experiments. How long will it take to grow this child? I fear accelerating the process might cause the body to fail. The one, uh, the, uh, the only one after years of silence. I understand the situation. Natural growth. I do not have that much time. We will have to go with a backup plan. Yes, uh, Novator, it will be done. The memory was gone. Saiken once again found himself plummeted into the maroon abyss of roiling visions. The captain went uh, to the screams. The Lord Captain crashed from an immeasurable height to the bottom of the roiling abyss. The next moment Saiken saw two figures amidst billowing maroon mist. One of the figures, unnatural, gaunt and tall, was clutching over the other smaller one, uh, screaming furiously. And that is potentially how the transfer happened. Awareness test succeed. Swirling mist around him, Saiken could not make the human faces stricken with torment. And not just human faces, there were Xenos, Alderi, the feature fused together with those of humans. Um, which means the Crimson Spectres looked all the more abominable. Their gaze and their rage were directed at the two unmoving figures facing each other. The Lord Captain drew closer attention to them, one step. Uh, was all it took for some unknown force to notice the Lord Captain seize him, drag him through the painting's twisted space. Now the Lord Captain could clearly see the dark shade of the long dead navigator is leaning over Cassia, clutching her neck and the clawed fingers. The shade screamed. 
You were given life because of me. You survived because of me. And here you are, because I have willed it so. Bow before me. Tell me what I wish to hear, and your suffering will end. Go on, child. I have waited so long. Submit to me. Cassia looks exhausted, her uh, body covered in hundreds of thin cuts, her lip lacerated, claw marks on her cheek. Yet there was a steadfast resolve in her eyes. I know who you are, Tristaphone or Salio, I know what you crave. I saw it in the vision that you sent me again and again. I won't allow you, I will never allow you to become me. Cassia's fatigued voice quivered, but she was uh, not about to yield in this battle. All right, we stepped uh, to Sualia with the ritual decker. The silvery blade rissed through the air, and Tisophone let out a horrible yowl. Her skeletal figure flew uh, um, upwards and scattered into the black. And with that, it was all over at last. Proving groans came from within the maroon of the mist. Faces of hundreds of Alderi slowly evaporated alongside the dead navigator. When the lady navigator opened her eyes, the space around her changed. The bright colors drove the mist away from the faintest light. Some were very high above the rem uh, uh, reminded the rogue trader of the world uh, he had left on the other side of the canvas. The lady, lady navigator graced the Lord Captain with a tired smile. The abortive ritual had turned out to be a trap set by lady uh, set for lady cassia by the previous novator of the house but the rogue trader had ensured that the plan fell into ruins and now it was time to desert this accursed place cassia took the rogue trader's hand and guided him through the uh, maroon and out of the painting the unconscious bodies were discovered in the sanctum nevis 20 Terran days after their disappearance, as soon as the rogue trader's void ship had emerged from the warp in an unknown system. Oh, wow. Okay, first of all, chart new routes. Damn it, I wish there are more planets, but maybe I'm wishing for too much. Uh, the game is already big as it is. But more planets would be cool. I really like that exploration aspect. Finding out uh, the little nuances here, uh, here and there. Good, we're beginning our scan. Nothing in the sector. Got a burning world. Uh, we still haven't found out uh, what the deal with those burning worlds is. But it would be great to find it out. And we got another scan with a landing. Yes! Finally a landing. Okay, uh, very good. Well, see... This uh, calls for the prime team. And I was itching to get these guys back into action. So off we go to Crone World. And boy oh boy, let there be a good fight, please. All right, landed. Here we go, Cassia, Tank. And we got a good front and back line. I love what I'm seeing. Oh, this is going to be good. The world trembles beneath. I pray to the god emperor that under incendia should as rule. Footfall will pass all the trials it must face and emerge purified. Resurrected to Alderi a Alderi chainsword. Life. Okay, so apparently we're at an old Alderi world, which makes sense because uh, they are indeed experts in soul transfer. So I'm not surprised to hear that they have been helping. I wonder why they have been helping. But it's cool to have uh, a storyline around the Alderi. Because they have been underserviced in most of the titles uh, so far. Also, Celia, uh, need to know what is taking place. The navigators are still frightened enough by the power. The last experiment left uh, the Cephala clan without a shared... Uh, a shred of reason. Empty shells will bring no glor glory to the house of Celio. At least we have managed to implant the artifact in the subjects who can wield power. Perhaps all navigators who perished in the agonizing torrent of energy were merely a symptom of our decline. I'm uh, tired to, uh, to, uh, of counting the dead. The weak have no place amongst uh, those who have harnessed the Atlas. Their ability have grown 
manifold and become significantly easier to control um, and more effective at resisting uh, the ruinous influences of the warp. Okay, interesting. I tread a path Part of the navigator's camp is where Trisophone or Aselio performed her experiments uh, hundreds of years ago. better myself through my service got a couple of goods what do we have a plasma ring uh, very good and the wearer uh, and the allies are immune to damage from the grenades the first time the wearer uses a grenade they have a 50% to not expand the grenade also not bad uh, grenades are actually quite fun uh, I don't have a really dedicated grenade uh, build the closest uh, that I got is J um, but I also noticed that the slots are very 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 valuable so so there's always an opportunity cost of putting something like that on Let's seize the opportunity. All right, take you. This exploratory is blessed with multifunctionality. Uh, fifteen ballistic skill. Oh, it's maybe not so bad. What are you prayer. wearing? Hmm, more critical damage actually is better. Take you. Ah, his ballistic skill is fine. I failed. Was that supposed to be a challenge? When the faithful are idle, heresy grows. Blessed be the hand of the healer. Okay. That's unfortunate. Good, let's explore Embrace the rest. Uh, I think that fatigued is not the, w uh, the end of the world. Someone removed the data crypt from this dead machine. Yeah, they the wanted world. to keep quiet wow. about what has happened here. Curse child, we had to ally ourselves with the Xenos once more to stop you. No matter, it's a small price to pay for the liberation of House Oselio from the chains of tyranny. It was clear that this is not going to go down well. Okay, what are we facing? Be gone, renegades! We follow the Atlas call in your wake, child. Stand with us, House Orselio will not trade his Tenefice's uh, legacy for a false ideals of blind fools. What is even happening? Come on, a third faction might uh, join in. Uh, wh wh what's happening? Ah Chaos? Marcellus uh, renegades represented. Damn, Xenos, this was not a bargain. We struck, thrown, smet you. What is this? The rogue trader and the traitors uh, to the house have lured the child into a trap uh, by the Xenos. I wish my eyes were deceiving me, but now I can clearly that the great reagent Arato was right to send us after this vessel. I would like to be enlightened about what is happening here. 
you will stop defiling the remains of the hallowed ground with our ancestors with your semblance speech, Monkey. The final act will soon unfold where you will pay for the deeds of your ancestors. Stay put and wait for the puppeteers to pull your strings. Uh, these guys look like harlequins. Why? Why are there Xenos uh, runes in the Palace of the Atlas should be? Why is this place located in an impenetrable black mist? I, I'm i suffocating. Three-eyed monkey who sees uh, into Shael, the taint of your ancestors, has begun to consume your body and soul, pathetic fool, with an insatiable lust for power that is not yours, ending your misery, uh, misery will be merciful. Taint? Do you mean the Atlas? Xenos traitor? Silence traitor. The Atlas is the sacred relic of House Oselio. Um, it is what elevates us above, above the rest. How dare you? I refuse to accept this. Impossible. What is this place? Your primitive language has no words to convey the true nature of this place. Uh, but I will venture to try. Some call it the world beneath the first stars, other known it as the crown world or the unbelighting world. It is our ancestors' home bef um, before we became prey uh, of Slaness. What is the taint you speak of? Do you not see it? When your monkeys discovered the crown world, you tainted it with your crude technology, despoiled it of its relics, ruined all that was here to the last stone. But worst of all, you sullied the souls of the ancestors reposed into a sacred vessel, the spirit monolith. Uh, he points a finger at the remarkable crystal behind his back. Uh, like a sea of bottomless blue, I did not know anything of living colors could exude such saturated hues. I wish I could paint this ocean in a different color. We're examining the crystal. The enormous translucent uh, stone shares a strange resonance with this place you can sense. Uh, the energy from it mysteriously relentless coagulated it re resembles a giant heart that has been plucked uh, now to its uh, out of its owner's chest the crystal uh, clar uh, clarity is pierced by the hundreds of dark veins that have um, taken root within its terrible illness how did the navigators of house oselio taint the spirit monolith the experiments this is where she conducted her experiments tisiphone no Impossible. You consort with Xenos in, uh, to violate the word of the god emperor. It is known to all of Tisophones or Celio executed anyone who showed any interest in the enemies of humanity. Is that so? Then why is it that the piece of metal fabric in her place bears our house coats of arms? Open your eyes. All right. What experiments did uh, Tisiphone do here? I, I cannot say where well, this memory is spraying from perhaps the visions of Tisiphone is in my dreams and yet I've seen it also clearly there had been a power locked within the stones such opportunities it would make our navigator's abilities several times stronger no it would magnify them by a factor of dozens but the price was too high after mere hours of use the stone could always burn the minds of the host that is why Tisiphone broke um, the monolith into many shards which were far easier for humans will to control no your ancestors went ancestors went uh, further than that they placed the shards of the spirit monolith inside their bodies to empower their abilities i never wished to learn such hard truth about my own house Neither Theodora nor uh, Van Valencius nor um, Tisiphone were infallible, uh, but that doesn't mean um, we are powerless to rectify the errors of our ancestors. Uh, you, you are more than a uh, tyrant's heir. You are the successor of a mad heretic. Betray our faith. You must be destroyed. You and the Atlas, once and for all. You think the solution, uh, Trope Master, you think the solution is so easy, don't you, Monkey? When you die, your souls become captives inside the spirit monolith. This process is dera uh, has deranged our ancestors, uh, who have served the monolith as guardians for aeons. It is equally agonizing to the souls of your dead. And the monkey's souls in the monolith absorb the more volatile it becomes. The Aldarian and the monkeys have spent many 
a dance of battling for the supremacy of the monolith and its integrity is waning. You sense it too. The only way to free our ancestors from the pain is to separate the monkey from the spirit monolith. My trope here is to perform just that and you will all play your parts today. As the final act of this age-long tragedy begins, the monkey players will exit to this world stage. Is there no way whatsoever to separate the navigator souls from those of the Alderis without killing the other? I do not believe there is. The three-eyed monkeys have desecrated this place and I will put the spirit monolith at risk just to help them to avoid the consequences of a lamentable performance. Um. Hmm. Kasia is the inheritor of uh, the one who bound the spirit monolith. Listen to what she has to say, she's not the woman's predecessor. I cannot change the past, says Cassia, nor can I change the fact that the house is um, now forever tainted with disgrace born of Tisiphon or Salius hubris. Yet all of us are here today, have the power to change the future and halt the unending suffering that is drowning both your kin and mine. You, you suggest that the monkey and the Alderi change the future together? I must admit, uh, my leading lady, I am confounded by your audacity. Go on. My Atlas, if you can free the phantoms of the house spirit from the monolith, guide them to my Atlas. Their experience and wisdom will help to steal Horus or sail you into the path of true truth and allow further generations to avoid Kalmitia's pitfalls of their forebearers. Kier Morak, my lady, uh, my lady, the shard of the monolith. Uh, are lodged inside your chest of every monkey is bound to the ties of blood how exactly do you intend to return them i shall use the atlas to sever my subject's connections to the spirit monolith and then i shall extract the shard from every navigator of house or Salio. these artifacts is implanted at birth but that doesn't mean that the ritual cannot be reversed. I witnessed the creation through Tessephony's eyes in my visions. I lifted over and over again through the memories of the Thessala clan. I, I can recreate the ritual uh, with, uh, uh, which will return the souls of your kin and save the people's life. Seldom do humans and Xenos get the chance to resolve the conflicts without violence. I second that proposal. I am willing to try, monkey. Uh, and great uh, regions envoy. No, I won't let you destroy the Atlas. Even if it is the, the, the child's wish. Lady Orselio, you're too young, inexperienced. You simply cannot comprehend. You address the future novator of House Orselio, one who survived the massacre of Yurok V, who has lived following an attempt on her life in the Palace of Draconus, who has restored the house's stability in what send time you uh, has been free while you, all of you, have spent years destroying it from within. You address one who has passed through the tempest of the Sea of Souls to the true Atlas of the Rogue Trader's ally. Yet you still call me unworthy, young, inexperienced? Kneel before me and I'll sh forgive your insolence. Also, Sel, you will always be loyal to the Novator. Henceforth, I will be loyal to the successor, even if you see fit to lead us down a different path, my lady. Are you done with your performance, monkey? Then stand aside and do not interrupt. I wanted to fight. But that ending is much better. The role player in me has decided to do that instead of just gunning all of them down. But they look very tasty. Ah, I can feel it again, the tranquility. The ancestral souls have found peace and corruption no longer endangers the monolith. Remember our agreement, Cassio Rosselio. We will soon meet in this place again and then you can give us the shards. And now... Be gone from our world, monkey. Well, well, well. Intriguing. 
that is a great ending i like it from an rp perspective but boy is it dissatisfying to not um, to not fight these guys the trope master certainly would have been a great enemy let's see well the opportunity. it is what it is Good, let's check the bridge and see what we need to do. Very good, so, price of power. The Lady Navigator wishes to discuss uh, her thoughts. You can find her on the ship, I know. And if my memory uh, is correct, she's always over here. Oh, how nice of you to grace me with your presence. I was just thinking back to our journey to the Palace of the Atlas. That is, to the world of Xenos. <laughs> Remembering that most reckless act has enveloped my mind in a whole palette of hues. But when I think of the great risk you took for House Orcelios and my own sake, an azure shawl instantly descends on my shoulders, and amber sparks flash inside my soul. Please accept my sincerest gratitude. So you're now the full-fledged novator of the House of Salio. You of all people should know that succession is a lengthy and tiresome process. What awaits the navigators now? The Xenos have managed to free the souls of our ancestors from their confinement. The memory and wisdom of those that came before us will serve our house, helping build upon the ruins of the present a firm foundation for generations to come. I believe in that, as I believe in the divine light of the Emperor. So now the entire power of the Atlas is in the Novator's hands. I suppose so, if by power you mean priceless knowledge. As for the special powers granted by the Xenos souls, the navigators of House Orcelio will once again have to contend with their own bodily and spiritual limitations. However, I am undaunted by the prospect. For our line and our gene have never been weak. House Orcelio will succeed, and soon we will rise again, draped in white and gold. Of course, Fantastic. I will try to answer any questions you have. I have enjoyed your company. Thank you for the conversation. And uh, thus ends her uh, personal story. Unfortunately, I couldn't give you the fight uh, that we all wanted to see because this was a much better ending. Um, sometimes you just got to stick with the better endings. I hope you enjoyed it uh, regardless. The next time we are going to go to the siege and are holding war council um, in a very common attempt of cooperation between humans and Xenos, uh, I would ask you to click the like button and um, help this video to go viral. Thanks a lot for watching. See you all in the next episode and take care. Bye bye.